Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I got my man, Coach Rafa here, the Brazilian bomber, to go and teach you a simplified serve. Okay? Stay tuned. All right, so we're on the court. Got my man, Coach Rafa. He's got the simplest serve I've ever seen. And I feel like he's the one to teach you the basics of a serve. Now, Coach, uh, explain to me what makes a serve and how to simplify it a little more. Well, I had to simplify because I had a, you know, rotator cuff surgery. And for a while, I couldn't do much with it. So I had to really make it simple and efficient and use and maximize everything I had. So obviously the toss is the most important part, right? It's the timer, it's the balance keeper. But there are a few tricks that if you master, you'll be able to reach the ball at the highest point without much motion and you'll be able to accelerate and hit a target. So let's start with the toss, okay? We're gonna line up and Coach Rafa is gonna teach you where to toss and how to toss and how high to toss, all right? Stay tuned. All right, obviously where you line up, doubles, singles, we know, already know about that. But what I really like to do is the visual, which is where I want to serve, it's line up my toe to the right pole, okay? So, it, you know, we learn about the clock, right? The noon, 3 o'clock, that gives me that kind of like 1.30-ish. So when I have that visual, it's much easier for my hand to follow my toe and I have here the perfect angle I want to toss the ball. The second thing, the, the timing aspect of the serve is I want to make sure I, I want to toss the ball, release my hand by the shoulder length. What happens a lot of the times is we release the ball so early. We're talking San Francisco, obviously a very windy place. So there's a lot of traveling. Ball can move a lot, right? A more advanced person will be able to time it. What we want to do is minimize that traveling so I can control much more. And third, they also allow us to, by the time I make contact, I'm more square. See, it looks like I'm like a quarterback here. I'm very square. If I release too early the ball, usually what happens is this hand drags down, this hand start moving around, and I'll lose my balance and my time. If I release later, by the time I make contact, I'll be pretty much square, and that will give me that balance and the ability to reach the ball at the highest point. So, coach, let's let's show us some perfect tosses. Let's show us some perfect tosses. Okay. So here we go. Obviously, you know, make sure you have one ball in your hand. That's something that we all make a mistake. One ball in your hand. I'm not really big. I don't really mind how you use it, like palm, fingers. I mean, that's a personal preference. I usually use. I love this guy out. So when I toss. I want to make sure I release all the way here. So it's high enough, as high as I can reach. It's in front enough to force me to attack the ball. And also, because I release late, I'll be able to hit it. So that's a little behind me. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a little behind me. See, right there. Boom. Exactly what I want. So at what point? during the toss do you go after the ball i start my move i obviously break down something more simple that i don't have the full motion so i already started like locked here so i want to attack the ball when i feel the ball is about to reach the highest point of my toss so by the time i make contact i'll reach the highest point that i can reach so i'll be fully extended you want to make sure you're fully extended pronated forward perfect so at the peak of the toss right you go after it right so you want it to be right at the top before it starts coming down so right at the top right so basically right as you toss it you're pretty much going after it right? yes absolutely because you want to have that little wiggle room that could be like around I don't know a foot something like that so by the time you hit, you'll be able to measure and feel extended. 
what you don't want to do is have that, you know, usually the mistake that happens, people go around and say, hey, tossing too low, tossing too low. If that stays in your mind, and out of a sudden, you throw on the ball 50 feet high, but you're still making contact low. So let's simplify that. Try to hit the ball a little bit as high as you can reach and attack it. So by the time you make contact, you fully extend. So a lot of people are a little confused about the grip too. What grip do you use? Well, I, I would start with the, obviously the Continental is the most traditional one. I wouldn't mind, I don't mind if my knuckle goes a little bit here, you know. But once that knuckle passes right here, we got a problem. Then we have a forehand, okay. So anywhere around here is fine. If you're a super beginner, it's okay to be here. If you're more advanced, for you know, a good continental will give you more uh, flexibility and the ability to get different spins. So the way I was taught was more continental to actually more this way to close it off a bit more. That's how I was taught though. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, anything right around continental will work. You just don't, you don't want to hit it like a frying pan though. Yes. So you, we need that pronation. Okay. Absolutely. Cause later on when you want to try to work on spin, slice, kick, whatever, if you stay right here, it's going to be really hard to put movement on the ball. Everything you try is going to just come out flat. Right. So how hard, how tight are you gripping this? If you've ever been in a motorcycle or a bicycle, your hand is firm, but there is a little movement in your wrist, right? The wrist is the one responsible to put movement on the ball. So if you're really stiff, that thing's going to go flat and hot, you know, straight out. So your hands are firm but you want a little movement in your wrist. If you're a really beginner, obviously, not to lose because you're gonna lose, you're not gonna have as much control, but you need a little movement here. Perfect, so nice and loose, okay? Because you need the wrist to snap. Um, we're gonna do one exercise along the fence here that will help prepare you um, on a toss and contact point. Stay tuned. So this drill uh, teaches you what? Well, I mean, like I said, for a more advanced, you want to have that toss a little more moving forward. But where we are right now, the wall is a really good visual to see where we want to hit the ball. So if you want to draw a line around your shoulder, you'll be able to see where you want to release the ball. Now, I have the wall here because I want the ball when I toss to go straight all the way to the highest point that I can reach and help me to have the visual where I want to hit. And also the wall, if I have a little erratic toss, I'm going to easily see what's going on. So what I want to do is that I stay around like, you know, by the end of the racket, around the throat against the wall. That's a good distance, so it allows me to move forward. And when I toss, I want the ball to go straight, parallel to the wall, and make that contact point. So contact point, so contact point in front of you, okay? So by the throat, right, we're measuring. Right, would that be an arm's distance? Yeah. Would that be an a arm, little maybe bit, a yeah. little bit more if, than if, an arm's distance? And if it gets too close, if it gets too difficult, you can get a little closer, you know? because you wanna make sure that that ball will stay straight and in front of you. A lot, you see at the beginning, it's, it looks very easy, but you're gonna see in the beginning, a lot of your tosses are gonna to bounce and go left, bounce and go left. And, uh, and that's a good distance because it also forces you and you're gonna start understanding how you throw your hip in your left quad towards the ball. Right. So, with your arm in front, right, you're, you're basically, how many inches am I right now? No. Four inches, six yeah, inches yeah. from the fence, like right? So you want it to be right about there, so yeah. it's in front of so you. So the ball stays right here, right. and you know you don't have to start with the contact per se, mm -hmm. but once you feel more comfortable with the exercise, you know, then you can kind of start working that contact. So this teaches you to contact in front of you. So a lot, I know a lot of people.
people toss the ball like over their head or behind their head you know that's great if you're doing maybe a kick serve but for most people starting off right we want to hit it in front of us um, to hit a flat serve right I mean all of them because you actually make sure you, you, you start using your body you start understanding how you want to attack the ball and then more and more you're gonna have a, a more a, a more solid serve because it's gonna be consistent the word people use it then is a lot is consistent 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 that is much easier because you using your body in a proper way if you're more advanced like he said you can start kicking and moving around but I I like this toss especially because for a good player if you play against a good player he's gonna read your toss if you keep the ball right there it's gonna be harder for him to get that step ahead of you right but consistency is the game get your toss consistent get it in wherever your strike zone is so you can hit a more consistent serve right and then we can work on you know not being predictable uh, later but coach Rafa I always see has a very simple serve but it's very effective right he catches it in the right spot every time but you don't know where it's going until it bounces you know because it's the toss is always there he always starts like this right and then he, right at the last second, either cuts it or flattens it out or even sometimes kicks it to the, to the right. So um, it's very, very unpredictable, yet it's very simple. Um, anything else, Coach? Well, uh, some you guys probably saw that I started right here, right? I'm fully simplifying the motion. Some of you guys are going to say, well, I like to have a full motion. I like to get the legs together. Obviously, this is for a more advanced. But if you think about it, the main idea is to make sure your elbow is lowered on your shoulder, your triceps is working, and you attack the ball in front. If I start right here, I minimize a lot of the issues that I'm going to face back there. The less I do here, less I have to do with my toss. The more complex I have here, I need more time on my toss. So if you want to start like something very simple, efficient, sustainable, then you can make adjustments later. Start right here, keep that toss in front, and attack the ball. As simple as this serve looks, and as easy as it looks, Coach Rafa can actually pop this serve 120. When he catches it right, everything is working. The shoulder comes around, that wrist comes and, and lets go. It will pop, and it will pop at 120. So you guys think, you know, a lot of you guys think, oh, I got to get my arms, my legs in. I got to jump up like Roddick and fire it up, right? <laughs> you ain't going to add another 30 more miles per hour to that serve, right? It all comes, what his serve is, it all comes from just simplifying in the motion of the arm. Kind of like a pitcher, right? Like a pitcher. Yeah, like every thrower sport, a pitcher, a quarterback, you know, and like, like we talk about, you know, if I toss the ball in front of me, my body will be attacking the ball, you know. And remember, the more you start thinking about all the little things, you need more time in the toss. Oh, everything becomes very complex. So if I start right here, my triceps, it's, it's trigger my triceps, trigger my shoulder, trigger my legs. My entire body is moving towards the same direction. I can start from here. And then, you know, as, as you get more comfortable, Obviously, you uh, you can do something different yourself. Okay, so one word of warning: when you're doing this exercise, <laughs> right? No pulse. Right. Make <laughs> sure there's no pole behind here, and make sure you're using a cracked racket. Okay, so this yeah. is a cracked racket. Okay, don't use a new racket doing this. Be careful of the pole. <laughs> right, because there's this is that's a fence behind there. Okay, so don't use a brand new racket to do this exercise. All right. I want to thank my man, Coach Rafa, for simplifying this serve. Coach, where can we find you on Instagram? Oh, again, that's a tough one. Make sure you write it down there. G-E-A-U-X-C-O-R-Y-Z at Go Cars. Thank you, Coach Rafa. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Get air at the court.